Michael Jordan said, why are you going to fear a shot that you haven't taken? And I love that, right? <laughs> yeah, right, right. You don't even know. You're scared of nothing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, what's your biggest fear? Um, you know what? It, it, it's, it's exactly what we're talking about. It's, it's unraveling myself. You know, I, I have clouded it within the fear of success or the fear, fear of failure. My biggest fear is me. Mm -hmm. biggest fear is my mentality towards um true success and that i'm not talking about financially just just like that having uh, a very um comfortable mind and heart and soul like i i just I've, I've derailed myself out of that so many different times for whatever reason it's usually some sort of martyr thing too like a deserving thing and whatever and the fear is, is, is forgetting about gratitudes or forgetting about everything that I've just said. Like you said, it's so easy to, to talk to other people about it. But the minute I turn my computer off, what am I still? Me alone in my place. My biggest fear is me. And um, learning how to uh, attack that so that, you know, it's not, so the negative isn't affirmed and where I'm just, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm I'm worthy of the things that I want to produce in my life. That that is. So what's the worst thing that can happen? So you know, you, there's acronyms of fears, false evidence appearing real, and so your biggest fear is you. Mm -hmm. So specifically, the biggest fear fear of failure, fear of not good enough, fear of success. Yeah, it's fear. Yeah, success. yeah, sure. So it's it's fear. It's fear of having to restart again because I, I have I have restarted I have had everything I could ever want lost it all getting back to a place where that was coming again lost it all again that's the fear going all the way back to have to start a grind again in that way that's probably my greatest fear so when you look at that lost so what if right. you lost it all what's the worst thing that could happen I mean, if we're talking about all in a material way, and I still have <laughs> the people that have surrounded me my whole life, and now my wife and kids, it's not bad. There is no worse. It's just that that feeling. So what's the best thing that can happen? Oh man, <laughs> it's limitless. So, I mean, you saw, I mean, you know, Kay and Wyatt, it's just, it's limitless with the, those guys and, and Mayor. I, mean, it, I don't even know how to describe the best thing. And, and that's likely part of the issue is that I don't have a place to go. You know, I, I don't have like this, like I can do it for a business, but in my life, it's like, what is the best that can happen? And I don't know. I know it's great. So for those of you who have been through Bold and Forge, we talk about the analogy of running to the roar. And it's just, it fits perfectly here. And it's, so the analogy is the way lions hunt. Um, so they hunt in prides. For those of you who do not know, they could have anywhere from five, seven, 12, 20 lions, and they hunt together. And there's this one pride that as they hunt antelope, they're in the savannas of Africa, they have, every lion has a place. And they usually have like a great grandma lion or grandma lion, and she's diseased, she's crippled, her teeth are falling out, she's literally dying. She's maimed, but she still has this incredible roar. And lions are known for their roar. In fact, they've been tracked for five miles in the savannah. I, I was, that always just blows me away. In fact, I met someone that lived in Africa and I said, is that true? And they said, oh yeah, uh, you can hear them for miles, right? right? So they have this insane roar and they're also known for short bursts of speed and crazy strength. They're like 500 pounds of muscle and they can run a football field you know, about 35, 40 miles an hour. So it's like, boom, pedal to the metal. So they have a great grandma lion here on one side. The rest of the lions in the pride, they flank the antelope. The antelope are in the middle. And antelope are known for their endurance, right? So they can run fast for a very long time. So the great grandma lion, she lets out this insane roar. What do the antelope do? Run. Where? <laughs> Towards. Towards. <laughs> oh, 
<laughs> right away towards the other, right? They don't right. know the other lions are in the back, but the roar frightens them. It scares them. And this right. community, the response is fight, flight, freeze. And they run away and they run right into the pride of the lions that are the strong, the young, and they, they die. But they actually would, if they ran to the roar, they'd be free right. because grandma can't get them. And the other lions don't have that endurance. And it's just like in life when we have a fear. When that fear is roaring its ugly head, and it's usually false evidence appearing real, mm -hmm. if we run to it, if we step into it, and they say, not today, <laughs> we're going to move towards that roar, and we're going to take action, all the complacency leaves. That's where our greatest growth is. Mm -hmm. And it's just that analogy, man. And I just, Paul, I just love that you're so authentic and so real and so transparent. And I really believe that so many people, they need this message. They need to be reminded. You know, we all feel it. Yeah. Underneath the hood, we're all the same. We all have the same hopes, fears, dreams, um, insecurities. But it's addressing it. It's giving voice to it. It's going, huh, I notice that I'm thinking. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me mm -hmm. run to the roar. I know who I am today.